Josh Smith with gottobemobile.com. I'm gonna show you how to do more with your Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge camera. Now, the first thing that you need to know how to do is how to quickly open your camera. So this can be when your screen is off or when your screen is locked or when you're on your home screen. Double press your home button and it's gonna launch in. And as soon as it launches in, you can take your photo. That is the first thing. Next thing to look at are the settings over here on this side, a little easier to see with my finger over the setting. You can hide those with a tap, or you can tap that and you can see them. You can quickly change some of these. We'll dive down into those a little bit more, but right now we want to go into our main settings. If your phone's not unlocked, you will need to do that. We'll use our password to unlock. Now that we're in here, we can see some of the options. By default, the picture size is at the maximum, but the video size is not. So if you wanna record 4K video, you're gonna to have to go in here and you're gonna to to choose UHD. Now, while you're doing this, you can't use all of the features. So you're gonna to have to lose those if you wanna record in 4K. We're gonna go back to full HD and you can actually do 60 frames per second, but you lose some of those as well. So if you wanna record as much as possible, you're gonna use up or should say lose some of these features. So keep that in mind. We're just gonna go back to regular 1080p full HD. Now we can turn on tracking autofocus. And what this allows to happen is we're able to track the motion of an object as it goes across the screen. So I'm gonna tap and hold. And so it has that object. And as I move this across the screen, it tracks that and it will keep that in focus. It knows where it is. Lost it there, there we go. So we can slide it out and it'll keep that in focus. It's a really cool feature, really handy if you're recording motion. Now you need to make sure you turn that setting on. If you have that on, you lose video stabilization. I like to keep video stabilization on by default because I use that most often. That means when I'm holding it, if I shake a little bit, it's going to account for that and help me out. You can turn grid lines on, personal preference, whether you like to line things up into thirds. So with grid lines on, you can faintly see here, there are lines that show up so that I can keep my shot nice and composed like I want it to. Get Mario in there just at the right spot. There are a few other settings to look at. Location tags are on by default. You can set it to review pictures, which will show you the picture right if you take it. I don't like that. Voice control. This is really handy when it's on, like this. When your camera is up, you can say cheese, smile, shoot, record a video. And when you say these things, it's going to automatically start recording or taking a photo. You saw the screen flash there. So it's a really handy way to sometimes surprise people or if you have the camera set up across the room, you can use that feature. Volume keys function. This is really important. I have the volume keys set up to take pictures because that's what I want to happen when I push this volume key. So if I'm in the camera, when I push either of these, it's gonna take a picture. The other option, depending how you like to use your camera. You can set it to record video. And so this can be handy, so I'm gonna to remember to take my pictures up here, and then as soon as I wanna quickly go into video, I'm just gonna push that button, and all of a sudden I'm recording video. So if you want to quickly switch between video and photo, you can do that. Um, and then the final option is to use them to zoom in and zoom out. Now, I am not a huge fan of this because when I'm taking photos with a smartphone, I would rather actually get closer than zoom in and possibly lose some of the image quality. But if you prefer, you can set them up like that. We do have a pretty good zoom, maybe five, six, seven, eight X digital zoom. So it's not glass, you will lose some of the actual quality of that photo. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna switch that to take pictures. Other options, you can turn off shutter sound if you don't want people to know when you're taking a photo. 
Now, while I am, so regular zooming is pinch to zoom. So you can go like this, we can zoom in, we'll zoom all the way out to normal. Now, if I'm recording a video, and oh man, I really need to take a picture of this. I don't have to stop and go back out. I can just hit capture and it'll capture that frame at whatever resolution the video is. So while my video is going on, I can record all types of photos and then still get that video in there. Selective focus allows to keep certain things in focus while other things are not. So if we take this photo, it's going to take a couple of them. So here we have one of our photos with selective focus. You can see this car here is blurred out. Mario and this car here are pretty much in focus. If I tap far focus, it's going to change and you'll notice that this car is now completely in focus and Mario is out of focus. If we zoom in, you'll see that. You see, it's not perfect. Part of Mario is kind of a little bit in focus. This is a little blurry, but the background is right where we want it. Now, pan focus will combine the two and keep everything in focus. And so where this is handy, if you're going to take a portrait of someone, you can choose near focus and you'll blur out that background. You get a really cool effect where they're going to really stand out and look really, really nice. Far focus, if you want to kind of have something blurred in the front for that artistic shot, or if you need everything to be in focus, pan focus. So that's one of the really cool options that we like with the Galaxy S6. Now we can choose another mode. If we go back into our camera. We can go into mode. So with Pro, we can actually change a variety of settings. We can choose the focus, far, near, macro, fine-tune that. We can change our white balance, which you can see I'm changing it. Here we are not having it set correctly, so it changes everything. But what can happen is when you know what the condition is like, you can set that and you can get exactly what you want. We can also change some different types of themes, so we can get a little bit of a, an effect on the overall shot back to standard. We can change our ISO and we can do some exposure compensation. Dragging that up, make it really bright, dragging it down, make it really dark, drop it right back there in the center. Uh, and so you can keep these and set it up as you need it. With this on, you can change the metering around as well. So there's some handy options in there. So another option is a virtual shot. And with this, we'll actually go around the object to get a full 3D-like look at them. So I'm gonna push the shutter over here. And I need to move the phone in the right direction. And you'll see as I come across here, it's kind of lighting up in yellow. And I need to keep going, keep going, keep going. And when I come all the way around, it will stop. And then we end up with an item like this, where we have this virtual shot logo and it'll show. And this works out a little bit better if you have a bigger object, but here you can kind of see that, you now see all around and I can tilt. Another option to keep in mind is that you can download other modes. If you tap on download, it's going to take you to camera modes that you can download. All of these are free and you might recognize some of them from your Galaxy S4, Galaxy S3, S5, Note 3, Note 4, whatever. And so you can download some of these like beauty face, rear cam, selfie, sound and shot, sport shot, tap on whatever one you want, tap install, accept and download, and then you'll be able to access that from your camera so that you can use it when you need to take a different type of photo. You'll see that it now shows up here and you can tap on it. We're also going to show you how to take a slow motion and a fast motion video. Slow motion, you just tap on that slow motion under mode and then you get set up for your action. 
tap record. When you're done, hit stop. Go in here to your gallery and you can see it, slow motion icon. It slows down here in the center. Get that nice slow motion video and then it picks up at the end. And now, so I can drag these sliders down here. This center part here is where the slowness happens. And over here, I can change the overall length of the video. So I can trim that down to just the really good part. And I can even mute that if I would like to. And then I can export and save that new clip. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can go into mode and then go to fast motion and I can speed things up. So in this case, I'm gonna get ready, gonna tap record, and hit stop. So we recorded about four seconds, but it's gonna play back much faster. This is the logo for a fast motion. So we tap on that. And in that case, like we couldn't, we couldn't even see the motion because it was so fast. So you can change the speed. So we're just gonna play at 4x and you can actually see a little bit of that motion. Uh, but you can split it, you can change the speed, you can speed it up to 32. Works really great if you have something that's moving maybe slow and you can make it look insanely fast. If you need to quickly switch modes while you are in, a photo you can slide over just swipe in from the left edge and switch the mode that you want to use that way you can get to that real quick you can tap on effect here and it will add a different look to your photo and that'll be live so you can get that in there line up your shot get exactly what you want you can tap on effect and choose no effect to turn that off Another thing that's really handy is you can take burst photos. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can hold down, and you'll see up here it's taking 20, 30 photos. 30 photos is your max burst. Works really handy if you have motion, so you can show some of that. The other option is if you have the volume keys set up, you can use that to take a burst photo as well. HDR live view. So right now I have HDR on. Um, you might have it off. HDR Auto is really the best. It will turn on HDR when you need it, and you get to see a live view of HDR photos. So it's gonna basically show you what your photo will look like, even if that's not what the camera would normally see. One really handy option that I like is you can go to the Samsung Galaxy App Store and download the optical reader. And this can detect text and it can also recognize QR codes. So I was able to pull the text off the back of this box. Didn't do a super job. Let's see if we line this up a little bit better. Maybe the light's a little better here. And it's gonna pick the text up. So what's handy here is, and yeah, it did a lot better that time. If you line it up right, you're gonna be able to point this at notes from a meeting or at a whiteboard, class notes, whatever, and capture them. So there are a few really handy options if you use the front facing camera. So the first is beauty face. And so this can detect a face and apply a beauty type effect to it. So here it's going to, the higher you turn it, it will kind of remove some of the wrinkles, things like that from the face. Make you look a little younger, look a little nicer, I guess. Other option is you can use the rear facing camera sensor to take a selfie. And so you'll notice I just took a selfie there. I have my finger on the back and you have to smile and it will take it. As soon as it detects your face and a smile, it'll take your picture. And here I have a countdown on. Just place your finger right there. Now, the other handy mode is the wide selfie. So the wide selfie helps you put more people in the photo. And so after I tap this, I just basically tilt the phone one way and the other, and it combines them to show a bigger shot. 
keep more people in, not just more of Josh, but more people in your photo. So that's really all there is to knowing how to use the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. Both of the cameras run the same software, same sensor. Everything you need is right here. If you found this useful, check out the link in the description below and you'll find more Galaxy S6 tips and tricks. If you found it helpful, also please hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.